Hello everyone, today I have a uh, relatively interesting uh, take on a video. I thought it would be fun to show you, uh, at the very least, my approach to deck building in the Pokemon trading card game. Now, uh, I am definitely way more into Magic the Gathering, and I've been playing that for about five years as opposed to the handful of days Plus, vague memory from a couple years back when I was playing this very casually, just with booster decks. Um, but I asked around on Reddit, got some general advice, and it helped steer me in the right direction. And so today, I'm going to uh, show you a general approach towards creating a uh, uh, building a Pokemon deck. And of course, since we're doing it uh, on the online version, we'll be using the online interface. So, so obviously, you're gonna press the thing over here that says create a new deck. Um, now, all of my builds are in the expanded format because I don't know anything about the other formats. I just coincidentally kind of ran into that. Now, um, I happen to have recently opened a Charizard. So we're actually going to be uh, building our deck based off of that. Uh, I vaguely touched on the fact that generally speaking, you want to find one Pokemon that you want to focus on and then everything else is support. So obviously this is the direction that we're going to go. So, uh, I just unchecked the filters. We'll actually want to keep the filters on. It makes it a lot easier. So we're going to start by pressing the fire symbol and we're going to take a look at uh, some of our Charizard, Charmander Charizard options. So uh, first off, um, with any luck, you will not have to actually use your basic Pokemon, but if you do, of course, you're going to want something that uh, is going to hold its own and possibly do damage. So uh, let's take a look at a, a couple of our Charmanders here and uh, see what our options are. This first Charmander here, um, it's got 70 HP, it has Scratch and Flame Tail, and, uh, you know, not, not the greatest. It, it is nice that it can pretty much attack as soon as it has an energy on it, but, um, it's only 10 damage, it's not a huge thing. And if I'm being entirely honest, I'm kind of demotivated to use it because it's standing out in the rain and that just makes me sad. Um... Take a look at this one. Uh, it again has 70 life, which is uh, good. It's more resistant to attacks. Its attack, Fire Fang, does not only does 20 damage, but it also burns the opponent's Pokemon. And if we go back to this one, you see that its two uh, two energy attack also does 20 damage, but does not burn the opponent's Pokemon. Um, so I, I would be more inclined to use this one, especially because. Uh, he does not look like he's standing in the rain. As a matter of fact, it looks like the rain is gone, and he was perfectly sheltering his tail. <sighs> um, this one, uh, let's see, scratch for 10, reprisal, 20 damage for each counter on it. Well, it doesn't have a particularly high life total, so chances are when this gets swung on, it's not going to be able to collect a whole lot of damage. Now, uh... If you are running a deck where you could force damage on your Pokemon, this might be better, but I don't really see that being something that you would run in a fire Pokemon deck. So this one's also a no, and additionally, I only have one copy of it anyway. And then we have this one, which I, I have four copies of, and let's see, non-flare, again, just not really great. Uh, it's actually basically the same thing as the first one we looked at. But um, the only difference is I do have four copies of this one. So ideally, I would like to have four copies of this, but I only have two. So I will be using two um, until such time as I can upgrade and get two more copies of that particular one. And uh, we will fill it out with those because uh, with, with this one over here, because it does have the 70 points of damage and it doesn't look sad. All right, so moving on, uh, Charmeleons. I have a couple of different options for Charmeleon. Let's go ahead and take a look at what they do. This one's 90 hit points. It's two uh, energy attack, cl uh, claw slash, 30 damage. Heat blast, two fire, and a, and a uh, colorless, 70 damage. It's okay. Uh, let's take a look at this Charmeleon. I've got four copies of it. <clears throat> let's see. 
Burning Fighter, basically what this does is when you evolve it, it forces you to discard the top five of your deck. And if any of them are fire energies, you can attach it to this Pokemon. Uh, additionally, it has Flamethrower, does 80 damage, and you have to take an energy off of it. Um, there's a multitude of reasons why I don't particularly like this one. Generally speaking, if you're going to force stuff to get to the graveyard, you need to run a type of deck that is going to take advantage of this. And uh, I don't really see that happening, so this doesn't seem like it's going to be a good fit. And I didn't really mention this before, but it's only got 80 hit points, so I'm definitely not sold on that point. Um, I also dislike flamethrower effects, and this is literally a flamethrower effect. But, Charizard decks generally have flamethrower effects in it, unfortunately, so that is something we're most likely going to have to deal with later on. Uh, this one, Slash and Flamethrower, and as you can see, this is the highest hit points, Charmeleon. Uh, so, 100 hit points, yeah, 100 hit points. Um, that slash 30 damage flamethrower 80. I think this is a solid winner The downside is those we want three and I'll explain why here in a second and again We're limited because we only have two So I suppose I will settle for the one that in a couple of different ways is suboptimal in comparison Until again, I can get just one more of this um, <clears throat> Now the general formula for setting up an evolution set, if you're going all the way up to three, is you want four of the basic, three of the stage one, and two of the stage two. But we are going to be breaking that last rule a little bit here, and I'll discuss why here in a minute. So here's our normal Charizard. 160 hit points. It does 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon if it is a GX or EX in play. And that is really, really helpful because a great deal of the meta in this game focuses heavily on GX and EX Pokemon. So therefore, you're going to be able to take advantage of that ability, uh, ability a lot. And having relevant abilities in a game is a key factor to building a good deck. Now, Again, I inherently don't think that this is good because you have to constantly discard energy from it, uh, which means you're going to have to run a sub engine, and we're going to get to that in just a second. But uh, this is basically going to do 130 to anything that is not a, a GX or an EX, 160 to anything that is. Um, it's a pretty solid beater. I do wish it had a higher hit point level, but honestly, I can't complain too much. This is actually a competent card and then we actually have a gx and this is what motivated me to go for the uh charizard build i happen to open one of these um four three uh energy you can do wing attack for 70 damage four five including an explicit uh three red you can do 300 and then you have to pitch three fire energies which again is not something i'm particularly fond of but we do have a way to work around it and make this a passably functional deck um i know if you saw my salamence uh video you're probably thinking well salamence pitches them and you are correct but it does mostly focus on having functional engine to support that and we're gonna have to pretty much copy that over here um, and if I'm being entirely honest, I like the way that Salamence works better in comparison to Charizard. Um, because he doesn't force you to discard as much, and it doesn't take quite as much to get charged up. Um, uh, but before we, uh, go too far, let's see. Rage Out GX, discard the top 10 cards of your opponent's deck. And I've gotta say, I can't think of a way that this would become relevant. Um, you might disrupt your opponents, but who really knows? Uh, hit points, 250 is respectable. I do still, again, wish it was higher, but we will just deal with it. Now, as you may recall from my Salamence build and my Eevee build, Marowaks are really good for helping with mana issues. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, energy issues. <laughs> so, we're going to use our Fetch from Deck uh, Marowak, which is, uh, it has the Attack Dance of Flames, which does not require any energy, and it allows you to go get a Fire Energy from your discard pile, um, 
Oh, I'm sorry. This is the discard one. So this one allows you to go get fire energy from your discard pile and put it onto your Pokemon in any way you like for the number of times that there is energy on your opponent's Pokemon. So ideally, what you want to do is have a Charizard on the bench, put the Alolan Marowak against somebody who has a lot of energy on their Pokemon, and you will use that to get some of the energy that might have been discarded earlier back onto one of your Charizards, load it up, and uh, go in and do a lot of damage. So we're definitely going to uh, be using two of those, and we're additionally going to be using this Marowak, uh, two of this as well. Um, and this is the one that allows you to go get two basic energy cards from your deck and put it on uh, Pokemon in any way that you like, which allows you to help load the bases. Hmm, actually, let me think here. Ideally, the way that we want to set this up is the exact same way that we do with the Salamence deck, which is where we have our Charizard, whichever one that we're using at the time, loaded and ready to go and just swinging out and doing as much damage as we can uh, with as little effort as possible. So I think what we'll do is we'll actually copy the same number of Marowaks of each kind. So one for the Graveyard Recursion one, two of the one that allows you to fetch from the deck. Um, now, of course, we do need a Cubone in order to evolve it. So we're going to go ahead and get out of fire, go over to fighting, apply, and we're going to use the search button here on the uh, right-hand side in the middle, just above where the Pokemon are at. Type in Cubone. And we have the same Cubone options as before. And I'm going to do the same thing as before, like I said with the Salamence deck, where it's just two and two. Because they both have unique attacks, and if we're ever stuck using them, uh, we'll have a bit of diversity. So uh, with that, we're up to 17 Pokemon. Our primary focus is, of course, going to be the Charizard. And then we have Cubone for energy-based support. Um, there is one other card that I do plan to add, though, for both thematic and functional purposes. And again, it is in the Salamence deck. And it's going to be my Charizard Braxian. <clears throat> so we'll throw it in there. We now have 18. Um, now, according to some sources on Reddit, this is kind of high. But, if I'm being entirely honest, I don't know why that's bad inherently. Um, I think as long as we make this, in general, a very functional build, we should be fine. Now, uh, let's go ahead and jump over to the trainer section and take a look at some of the options. Now, I've already gotten used to a handful of staples that I think are going to be very good for this deck, and we're going to go ahead and search for them now. So, one of the things that... Oh, hold on. That's right. This is pretty useful. So you take two fire energy cards from your discard pile and put them onto one of your Pokemon. That's most of what Charizard discards whenever he attacks. Well, the big one, anyway. <clears throat> Alright, so back to what I was saying. Uh, I was told by a couple of different people that it would be a generally a good idea to run a total of eight cards that allow you to draw. So uh, we're going to be using Sharon. Uh, I'm just going to use three of that, and you'll see where I'm going with this here in just a minute. Um, Cynthia, shuffle your hand into your deck, draw six cards. We're going to go ahead and put in two. This is very typical, at least for the way that I build it. Um, we are losing a lot of energy, so we're actually going to go ahead and put in a couple copies of Energy Retrieval. What this does, you put two basic energy cards from your discard pile into your hand. Uh, very useful. It's a pretty common staple. It goes into a lot of decks. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I really like this one. It is unfortunately a conditional draw, but it is conditional with the upside of you just straight up get four cards. So I'm just going to throw one into this particular deck. Now, uh, this deck does rely a lot on evolutions, so we will be using two copies of Evo Soda, which I'll summarize this text. Basically, you play it, you target a Pokemon on your bench that can evolve into something else that is in your deck. So uh, we can do a Charmander into Charmeleon, Charmeleon into Charizard, or a Cubone into Marowak. And um, it just goes and gets it for you, in the same way that uh, the Sylveon does uh, for any card. Kind of a bad example, but it still stands. Uh, this card right here 
is uh, energy retrieval, but it's double. And uh, this is where we got to talk about a distinction between uh, trainers and supports. You can only uh, play one trainer per turn, but you can play as many supports, uh, item supports as you want. I'm sorry, hold on, I mixed that up. You only play one support per turn, but you can play as many items as you want. So if I had two energy retrievals in hand, I would could be able to play two of them. But if I have a fisherman in hand, I would only be able to play one. Additionally, if I play this fisherman, I can't play, um, there we go. I can't play Evelyn. I can't play Cynthia. I can't play Sharon. <clears throat> and I don't believe I would be able to play this either. I can't. So that said, I'm actually going to go ahead and up this energy retrieval to three because energy retrieval is a very important theme and the way that this particular deck flows. All right. Um, I do want to point out there's a bunch of different cards that allow you to draw three. So for whatever you want your entire draw support to just be stuff that says draw three cards, I can recommend Sharon. What was this one called again? Sharon. How. And there's another one called Torino. And let's see. Going down the line here. This one's really uh, useful for combat tricks. I'm slowly growing more and more fond of it, um, but I'm not gonna go ahead and put it into this particular build. And let's see, going down the line, what else do we got here? Uh, Pokemon communication, no. No potions. Energy retrieval. This is literally just energy fetch. This is particularly useful. This is uh, allows you to just go get two basics. And since this is only going to be a fire Pokemon deck, um, obviously we're be able to just run entirely off of basics. A rare candy would be really helpful. This allows us to go straight from Charmander to Charizard. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and put one in there. And then there's a stadium card that I'm looking for. Ah, almost passed it. Uh, Burning Earth. I have two copies of it. So I'm going to add two copies. What this does, that allows you to pitch a fire energy and go get a... Uh, go ahead and draw two cards. And you can do this once per turn. You no, know, now that I'm upping the number of ways to throw energy cards into the graveyard... I think it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to go get some more energy retrievals. And I believe I only have uh, the three of that particular style. So we'll go ahead and just get another style. Um, let's get this one, I guess. Why not? So we will have a total of four energy retrievals. That's 21 trainers. Let's see. We can still add a couple more trainers before we need to stop and fill the rest of the deck up with energy. So let's take a look at some of our options. Now these two here, not, not these, um, Pokemon Communication, Pokemon Fan Club, I do use them a lot. I think in this instance, it would be a good idea to run three copies of Pokemon Communication just because you can take something that you don't need in your hand, like a basic, and go get an evolved form, or maybe take an evolved form in the early part of the game and go get a basic. So, yeah, that's my thought process there. And let's go ahead and put in two copies of Professor Kukri. Uh, it's a little bit of excessive on the draw side, but this does allow us to do a boosted amount of damage as well. Hmm. No, I still think the excessive draw is a bit of a problem. No, it's fine. It'll actually be pretty balanced. So, with that said, we can only put in another 16 cards. Um, now, this particular set of Pokemon doesn't really benefit from having double colorless, uh, as you can see. Um, this would be about the only one that does benefit that way. Well, I guess the Charmeleon could too, as well, but... Ultimately, we're going to be focusing on using Charizard and this other Charizard, so... You know what? 
we will put in a couple. So we're going to put in two, and then we're just going to make the rest all um, regular fire energies. Let's do... Let's go for a more classic look. So Charizard's a pretty classic Pokemon. So uh, if you look in the right-hand side, you can see it says 47, and we're going to bring this all the way up to 60 now. There you go, 60 now. You can only have 60. You can't save with less than 60. And if you try to go over, it's going to warn you and tell you you need to go back down. So that's what we're going to do. And that'll be it. All right. So now that we've finished uh, building the deck, um, we can go ahead uh, and save some specifications for you know style purposes. So you can name it whatever you want. I typically like to go for something funny, but if I'm being entirely honest, I'm not going to keep this deck, so I'm just going to name it Basic Charizard. Um, you pick one of the coins based off whatever you have. Uh, I'm just going to stick with this red one. Choose a deck box. Um, it usually gives it gives you some options based off of what type of Pokemon are in your deck. In this case, we do have fire and fighting, but it's mostly focused on fire, so I'm just going to stick with the fire box. And then you can pick some card sleeves based off of what you have available. In this case, um... Use this cool black and white one. I like this one. I, I've actually saved around a couple of different decks now. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So I will go ahead and do a gameplay video uh, on this particular deck before I uh, delete it and trade out pretty much everything in there to make a better deck. But that's about it. That's a general introduction on how to uh, build a deck, or at least the thought process behind it. Now, naturally, different Pokemon, different styles of Pokemon will have different impacts. And so it's really important to think about the way that uh, synergy works in your favor. Um, and you're going to want to consider that with a bunch of other stuff. Uh, with a, or Just in general, you're just, you really want to think through all the uh, different aspects of it. So, for example, one of the decks that I'm planning to build has kind of more of a go-wide damage strategy, and we'll discuss that more when I actually have that deck built. But for now, just, you know, make sure you keep in mind, you want to keep things cohesive, oh my goodness, sorry, cohesive, and you want to focus a lot on having consistency, reliability, picking trainers that are relevant to what you have, picking staples, things like that. Um, for now, though, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later.